friends, welcome to the welcome to another video. Today we're doing part ten of the KOTLC during COVID series. Um, this was I also filmed part nine, so you should watch that one first. And yeah, let's go. Last week of summer, Fitz Vacker. Okay, folks, Keith announced one Monday afternoon. Fitz had invited him and Tam over to go swimming, and Bianca had invited Dex, Lynn, and Sophie. But Sophie had things to do, so she hadn't showed up. There is exactly 156 hours until school starts again. Bianca glanced over from where she was braiding Lynn's hair. You're seriously counting? Keith rolled his eyes. Uh, yeah, I need to plan out my summer perfectly. And so far, it's been horrible. Keith started numbering off on his fingers. I got corona, I couldn't go anywhere for a month, and when I do go somewhere, Tammy here ruins it. Tam scowled at him over his cup of lemonade. You're just jealous that I'm more attractive than you. <laughs> Keith laughed. In your dreams. But that's not the point. What I was trying to say is that we need to figure out the perfect way to end our summer. Ooh, how about a slumber party? Fitz shook his hair out and said, Honestly, as long as it doesn't involve makeovers, I'm fine with that plan. Lynn, Tam, and Dex agreed, but Keith shook his head. Slumber parties always end up the same way. Someone decides that we should play Tooth or Dare, then make it awkward. Someone confesses to someone else. It's so corny. Fitz smirked. Cob on, Keith. Don't be such a party pooper. Shucks, Fitz. Don't call Keith out like that, Tam said. Keith glared at him. I'm so sick of your husky voice, Tam. How about you shuck up? Dex laughed. Wait, guys, I'm confused. What's going on? Lynn was dying of laughter as Fitz said, Open your ears, Dex. We've been talking about this for the last ten minutes. The amount of corn jokes you guys come up with is amazing, Bianca commented. Seriously, everybody stop talking. Oh my gosh, I, I don't know whether to cringe or just laugh. <sighs> Keith interrupted. Tam snorted it and everybody collapsed into a fit of giggles. Fitz laughed so hard his stomach started hurting and he lied on his back. I'm literally going to die, he wheezed. Fitz, Ke I mean, Keith picked up his cup of water and poured it over Fitz's head. Fitz spluttered as Keith danced away and laughed. Oh, it is so on. He picked up his own glass and attempted to soak Keith with lemonade, but it hit Bianca instead. Fitzroy! Bianca jumped up and grabbed the nearest cup, getting Fitz and Tam wet. Tam smirked, shook his head wildly, and then dashed off toward the hose. Fitz ran after him, just to get drenched by the cold water. Keith laughed giddily and grabbed a bucket that was behind the house, running up to Tam. Tam attempted to spray him, but Keith blocked the water with his bucket, diverting the stream and splashing Tam with it. Fitz felt cold water splash down his back and whirled around, expecting it to be Viana. Instead, he whacked a shocked Lynn, making her trip and fall backward. Fitz, and Fitz grabbed her wrist to keep her from falling and smiled as she flushed. She was, he wasn't sure if it was the complete feeling of joy in his stomach or the adrenaline, but before Fitz could stop himself, he pulled Lynn closer and pressed his lips gently against hers. She let out a startled gasp, and Fitz flushed, letting go of her wrist and stepping back. Sorry, he mumbled. Sure, his face was bright red. Lynn didn't get a chance to say anything as Tam and Keith came with two buckets and drenched the both of them. Soon, all six of them were lying on the grass, soaked but laughing. Keith ran a hand through his hair, flicking grass and droplets of water off. That might have been the most fun I've had in forever. Fitz smiled and turned to his best friend. Yeah, way better than a slumber party then. Keith laughed. Definitely. Fitz turned to his other side, where Lynn was laying. She flushed when her silver she flushed when her silver blue eyes met his, but didn't look away. Fitz decided that was a good sign. He opened his mouth, but but was interrupted with a voice exclaiming, There you guys are! He turned and saw Sophie standing above them, a scowl on her face. He sat up and asked, What's wrong? Sophie didn't meet his eyes, instead turning to Bianca. Check your phone, she said. Bianca pulled her phone out, confused. She let out a little yelp of surprise, and Fitz pulled out his own phone. Twelve missed calls from Sophie. He grimaced as everyone else winced, looking at their own phones. I called all of you at least ten times. I thought you all drowned. Keith laughed uneasily. Don't be crazy, Foster. We're fine. She, she glared at him. I called all your parents, and apparently they didn't know where you guys were either. 
Fitz furrowed his brow. Oh, yeah, I forgot to tell Mom and Dad. Tam mumbled agreement, along with Dex. My parents wouldn't care either way, Keith muttered, standing up. Why didn't you guys pick up? Sophie asked. Beyond twisted her hair around her finger. I thought it was Mom or Dad, so I ignored it. Dex stuffed his phone in his pocket. Sorry, Soph, but I thought you were shopping, Sophie sighed. I was, but then our neighbors called us about Iggy getting loose. So I called Sophie to see if he'd seen, I mean, I called Keith to see if he'd seen him. And when he didn't pick up, I called Fitz to see if he knew where he was. I kind of panicked after that. Dex hugged his cousin and laughed. I'm sorry I worried you. Fitz stood up and smiled sheepishly. Me too. Sophie pulled away from Dex and wrinkled her nose as everybody else stood. Why are you all wet? She asked. Tam snorted. It's a long story. Well, that was fun to read. But I, I seriously hope they find Iggy in the next part. And that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Subscribe and click the bell button to get notified when I post new videos. Happy watching. Bye!